dangers outside, dangers inside, fires outside, fires inside. Where are you going to go? Unfortunately, not everything inside is on fire. Try to find a spot right now where there's a sense of stillness. And do your best to nourish that. Because whatever dangers there are, what you'll need is going to be the quality you build into your mind. Because when dangers come, you have to think quickly. And you can prepare and prepare and prepare and get all your ducks in order. And then you find out that the problem that's facing you has nothing to do with ducks at all, and the ducks may actually become a problem themselves. But if you are alert, if you are mindful, if you're concentrated and discerning, then you're much more likely to be able to handle whatever problem comes up. So the best way to deal with the potential for danger is to strengthen the mind. And here you are, meditating. You're doing precisely the thing that's going to help you, whatever the danger is. This afternoon we had what turned out to be a false alarm about an evacuation, at least for today. But even when those kind of alarms are false, there's always the potential for aging, illness, and death, for separation from those we love. This can happen at any time. So you want to be prepared at any time. So you work on these qualities. Each time your mind wanders off from the breath, you try to remember, where am I supposed to be? You're alert to the fact that you've wandered off and you come right back. That's the ardency that develops these qualities. Ardency is very directly related to right effort. And effort here doesn't mean just brute effort. What makes it right is that it's discerning, noticing what kind of effort is needed right now, how much effort. And also how to motivate yourself. This is a large part of the practice, is keeping the motivation going. And so noticing how much reminders of danger you need in order to keep yourself on top of the practice. And at what point it gets too much. In other words, at what point you get distracted by the sense of danger and begin to lose it. You want the right combination here of heedfulness and confidence. And then work on the skills. Like right now, you're working on the breath. There are different ways you can work with the breath. You can consciously tell yourself, okay, now I'm going to lengthen the breath and I'm going to shorten the breath, see how the body reacts, see how the mind reacts. Then how about the quality of how heavy the breath is, or heavy or light, fast, slow, deep, shallow. You can consciously experiment with these things. Or you can immediately go and start working with the breath energies that are more subtle, that permeate the, the nervous system in the body. And although the in and out breath may be more obvious, there are times when you find that by approaching everything from the breath energies works better. Just try to notice, is there any part of the body that doesn't seem to be there in your awareness? To kind of trace through things. Start with your fingers, go up your arms, the shoulders. See where the shoulders connect to the neck. Then go down to the toes and start working up through the feet, your shins, knees, thighs, hips, up the back. Any parts of the body missing? Any places where you feel a sense of space where there should be a sense of the body? We'll see if you can connect things together. Say your shoulder feels like it's missing. Okay, Trace things down from the neck through the shoulder to the arms, or from the arms up through. Or notice where you feel the neck and where you feel the part of the arm that is present to your awareness. And ask yourself, well, okay, what's connecting here? And you may find that your shoulder may not be dislocated in the sense of the 
the joint being out of whack, but your sense of where your shoulder is is not in line with the rest of the body. Okay, think of just imagine it coming back in in line. Think of things connecting where they should be. And as you're working with connecting the breath energies up, the in and out breath is going to find its right rhythm. So here's another way of approaching things. And this is especially useful when you find that you're over controlling the breath and it becomes a chore to think about breathing in, breathing out. You can just be with a sense of connection in the body. Connected while you're breathing in, connected while you're breathing out. It doesn't have to make any difference. That allows the, the mind to settle down with something that's more solid, more continuous. In fact, the more connected everything is inside, the easier it is to settle down into deeper and deeper levels of concentration. The breath gets more subtle. And when things really are connected, you'll, all you have to do is focus on one spot and you feel a connectedness throughout the whole body. So you don't have to keep tracing things here and tracing things there. You're just present in one spot and the awareness spreads from that spot. John Lee's images of cutting a whole series of roads through a forest and then running electric wires along the roads. And as soon as you plug in the wire, the whole forest is lit up. Nowadays we don't like the idea of running the roads through forests. He was talking at a time when the forest was a little bit overwhelming and you needed some way of getting through. That's what your body's like. There's a lot of tanglement in here, and you want to get it untangled. So think of cutting the breath energy channels through areas that you may not have thought of before. And stay with that. You protect it with your mindfulness and your alertness and your ardency. And the ardency here starts turning into the discernment that notices what's just right, what's not just right, where is there any unnecessary stress in here? Because you want to make your effort just right. That was one of John Lee's really great insights, which is that of those three qualities that are associated with mindfulness practice, ardency, alertness, and mindfulness, the ardency is the discernment factor. Your desire to want to do something right, that's the beginning of wisdom. And your desire to develop your discernment so you can figure out exactly what is just right effort. That exercises your, your wisdom and discernment as well. So we're working on concentration and discernment at the same time, tranquility and insight at the same time. And as you have a sense that these qualities are working together rather than at cross purposes, that helps to strengthen your sense of confidence that you can get the mind settled in and be really refreshed from the sense of being centered. And when you're centered, your powers of mind are going to be a lot sharper so that whatever comes up, you'll have your tools ready. Your knives will be ready to cut right through whatever the problem is. And with the strength of concentration, you'll have the strength to give a good sharp blow. So instead of getting your ducks in order, you've got these tools that can be used for any problem. This is one of the Buddha's gifts when he talks about the Four Noble Truths and the duties that are appropriate for the Four Noble Truths. This is a way of approaching any problem, no matter what your culture, no matter where you're from. You look for where there's stress, and you look for what you're doing to cause the stress, and you try to abandon the cause. And you develop all these tools so you can do it well.
make sure you're doing the duties right. Again, this is a part of right effort. There are some things to be comprehended, and that's all that falls under the, the topic of stress. And there are things to be abandoned. All too often we want to abandon the stress, and it doesn't work out. You've got to figure out what the cause is. It's like going into your house and finding there's smoke everywhere. You just put out the smoke without searching for the fire. It's never going to work, because as long as the fire is burning, there's more smoke is going to come. What you've got to do is work through the smoke, see where the fire is, put out the fire, and then the problem with the smoke is taken care of. Same with stress. We have to work our way through the stress. First event, distracted mind. Then you work through that until you get the mind to settle down. And then you notice that there are subtler levels of stress. You work through those to find out what's, what's causing all this. You work through them by figuring out, okay, what's causing it? Then you can put that out, put out that fire. Look deeper in, put out the next fire until all the fires are gone. And when your inner fires are gone, the outside fires present no problem at all, because they can't burn anything of yours, anything that you've laid hold of, because you don't need to lay hold of anything at all. What you've got is something that's beyond the reach of the fire. And that's the ultimate goal. But even on the way there, the treasures that we build into the mind, our conviction, our virtue, our sense of shame and compunction, our learning, our generosity, our discernment. These are treasures that no outside fire can burn. Just make sure your inner fires don't burn them up. And you'll be safe.